Seriously. What time is it? Kevin Costner is an American actor, director, producer, and businessman. He is known as a steel-eyed womanizer who keeps honor and dignity in any situation, and yet he could have become a marketer or financier. In this video, we will tell you about the twists and turns of this actor's fate. Kevin Costner how Hollywood's main bodyguard lives, and how much he earns. Kevin Michael Costner was born on January 18, 1955 in Los Angeles and became the third and youngest child of William and Sharon Costner. The family already had a boy, Dan, and another son died at birth. Costner Sr. worked as an electrical engineer and then rose to the head of public utilities, and Sharon served in the Department of Health. Because of his father's work, the family often moved from one California city to another, and Kevin had to find new friends over and over again. Sports helped him a lot in this, football and baseball. Besides, the boy often went fishing with his father and brother, built tree houses and also took piano lessons, wrote poetry, and sang in a Baptist choir. The actor admitted that he grew up a troublemaker but not a rebel. He didn't want to be the cause of his parents' anxiety, especially after his older brother was drafted to serve Vietnam. After graduation, the young man, at the insistence of his father, entered the California State University, majoring in marketing and finance. He studied well, working part-time as a jungle cruise skipper at Disneyland, and in his senior year, he enrolled in the theater class. For a long time, Kevin was sure that he did not have any stage talent, but acting attracted him more and more. Ultimately, this determined the future fate of the young man. After graduating from university in 1978, Kevin married his classmate, Cindy Silva. Costner described his first wife as a very beautiful and sweet woman who was smarter than him. She combined everything he liked about women. Returning with Sydney from their honeymoon, Kevin met the famous actor Richard Burton on the plane. This fleeting acquaintance became fateful because Burton advised the young man to give up all other classes if he really wanted to pursue acting. Costner immediately quit his newly obtained office job and headed to conquer Hollywood. Like other aspiring actors, Kevin took on any job that allowed him to pay for acting lessons. He worked on fishing boats, was a truck driver, as well as a tourist bus driver showing vacationers the homes of Hollywood stars. At the end of 1978, Costner got his first role in the movie Sizzle Beach, USA, which was released in 1981. The film went unnoticed until Kevin became a star. Then it was re-released with an advertising campaign based on the name of Kevin Costner trying to make money on his fame. Given that Sizzle Beach has explicit scenes involving the young actor, he later regretted his participation in the film and tried to buy back the rights to it, but to no avail. This was followed by small roles in such films as Night Shift, Stacy's Nights, and Testament, but also leading roles in the movies American Flyers and Fandango. In the comedy drama The Big Chill, released in 1983, most of the scenes with Costner were cut during editing, but director Lawrence Kasdan promised the young actor a role in his next project. It was the western Silverado, which became a breakthrough for the actor and defined his signature genre. Where's Emmett? Inside. Where have you been? Plant dead. After that, American directors started to give Kevin roles more often. In 1987, the neo-noir thriller No Way Out was released, in which Kevin performed almost all the stunts himself. A bit later, he starred in the crime drama The Untouchables, about a group of agents who helped overthrow the gangster Al Capone. Master, that we must agree to disagree. 
You're making a mistake. Yeah, well, I've made them before. I'm beginning to enjoy them. You fellows are untouchable. Is that the thing? No one can get to you? Yeah. You took a pawn. For this role, Costner was approved due to his nice guy reputation, which is intended to provide a contrast to Robert De Niro. A real agent of the Untouchables helped Kevin get into his role. Soon, thanks to his good physique preserved from school, the actor got the main role in the melodrama Bull Durham about a baseball coach. For this role, Kevin received $1.5 million. This was followed by the fantasy drama Field of Dreams and the action thriller Revenge, which became a real event in the film world and put the young actor on a par with the brightest Hollywood stars. Kevin played the role of a former military pilot who falls in love with the wife of his old friend, a Mexican mobster. Costner also acted as an executive producer in this project. To my surprise, to my deep surprise, it's harder to say goodbye than I thought. At the same time, the crime drama The Gun Runner was released, filmed back in 1984. It is unknown whether it should have seen the light, if not for the onset of Kevin Costner's rise to stardom. In 1990, Costner made his directorial debut, releasing a historical drama about the events of the Civil War, Dances with Wolves. In it, he also played the main role of an officer for whom the Indian tribe became family. Is the coffee not good? It's too strong, maybe. Too strong, maybe. But in... Funnily enough, Kevin's parents watched how their son worked on his directorial debut, sitting on one of the nearest hills in a trailer and waving to him every morning before the start of the shooting day. The father, however, was afraid that this gamble could negatively affect his acting career. But his fears turned out to be unfounded. This work became incredibly successful. The film received 12 Oscar nominations and won seven of them, including for Best Film and Best Director. In addition to awards and acclaim, the movie also brought Kevin $3 million as well as recognition of the Lakota tribe which accepted the actor into its honorary members. Unlike other Hollywood films showing Indians as either noble or bloodthirsty, Dances with Wolves showed them as they were. The movie was subsequently included in the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant. The series of successes continued with the release of the adventure film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves in 1991. Apparently, he learned a lesson from the unpleasant experience with Sizzle Beach because in the scene where his character appears naked, the actor decided to enlist the aid of a double. Kevin Costner's portrayal of the English folklore character is still considered the best ever performed on the screen. What would you have us do? Fight armored men on horseback with, with, with rocks in our bare hands? Needs be. But with the one true weapon that escapes you, Will. Courage. But critics did not appreciate the work of the actor immediately after the release and nominated him for the Golden Raspberry Award. In the same year, the historical thriller JFK premiered. For the title role of the district attorney, Costner received $7 million. In an interview, the actor said that he rehearsed the scene of the appeal to the jury in the pool while his mother sat beside him with the script in his hands, correcting him. Kevin Costner has been preparing his next project, the iconic drama thriller The Bodyguard, for several years as a producer. All this time, he was trying to persuade his only candidate for the role of Rachel, Whitney Houston. Finally, the singer gave her consent after Kevin's assurances to help her with advice. Costner, a longtime country music fan, is also responsible for the choice of the song for the climactic finale written by country diva Dolly Parton. Despite the huge success of this beautiful love crime story, both Kevin and Whitney received nominations for the Golden Raspberry. Well, you don't look like a bodyguard. What'd you expect? Well, I don't know. Maybe a tough guy? This is my disguise. Interestingly enough, the actor planned to shoot a sequel to The Bodyguard with Princess Diana, and he received a draft version of the script the day before her death. 
1993, Kevin appeared in the lead role in the film A Perfect World, and a year later, he starred in the western Wyatt Earp and the drama The War. But the main events then unfolded in his private life. Unexpectedly for everyone, in 1994, the actor divorced his wife, with whom he had three children and became a real ladies' man, changing women like gloves. Cindy then said that she did not recognize in this man the former Kevin, with whom she had lived together for almost 17 years. Among Costner's relationships in the following years were models Bobby Brown, Elle McPherson, and Naomi Campbell, actresses Mira Sorvino, Courtney Cox, and others. From one such affair, Costner had a son, Liam, with actress Bridget Rooney. The man acknowledged paternity only after a genetic test, but later gave him his last name and set up a trust fund in his name. Costner's behavior on the set has also changed. As a producer and performer of the main role in the film Waterworld, he lived in a villa with a butler, a cook, and a private pool, a stay in which cost $4,500 per night. At the same time, the main part of the film crew lived in condominiums, where the heat was unbearable. Poor living conditions led to hostility on the set and, according to rumors, because of the conflict with the director, Kevin also ended filming himself. For his work, he received $14 million, plus a percentage of the grosses, while the production budget was significantly exceeded and the grosses didn't cover the costs. To drift is meat, something needs to be exchanged. I know the code, but I'll give you this one for free. Nothing's free in Waterworld. <laughs> In the same year, the sports rom-com Tin Cup was released. Preparing for his role, Kevin took extensive golf lessons and many of the strokes in the film he performed himself. He became so involved in the sport that since that time, he regularly takes part in the famous tournament in Pebble Beach, California. In addition, he played golf with several U.S. presidents, Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Also in the 90s, Costner began to perform as a country rock singer. Many years later, he would form the band Kevin Costner and Modern West, which released a number of albums and even went on a world tour in 2007. Costner's second directorial project, the 1997 post-apocalyptic action, The Postman, failed miserably at the box office. In addition to the commercial failure, the movie was also expected to win in all five nominations for the Golden Raspberry. Yet for the sake of The Postman, Kevin turned down the role of the President of the United States in the blockbuster Air Force One. It was written specifically for the actor, but he himself offered the role to Harrison Ford. Together with Costner, the actor's three children from his first marriage also starred in The Postman, Annie, Lily, and Joe. All of them, by the way, are still working in the film industry. In 1999, the actor starred in the films Play It to the Bone and For Love of the Game. Interestingly enough, in the latter, Costner was supposed to appear naked again, but this scene was met with laughter at test screenings, so it was cut out. Another film of that year, the love story Message in a Bottle, returned Kevin to the image of a rugged womanizer and won the love of the audience. Loud mouth and What'd you say? I didn't know I was talking to you, Johnny. <laughs> Next came the movies 13 Days with a fee of $15 million, 3,000 Miles to Graceland, and the supernatural thriller Dragonfly. MGM Studio refused to produce the latter as they considered Costner's $15 million fee to be overstated. Then the rights were bought out by Universal, but the film flopped. For the sake of his next directorial project, Open Range, in 2003, Kevin declined the offer to play in Quentin Tarantino's action movie Kill Bill and again did not skimp on production. At his request, the scenery of the city was built away from populated areas, which cost $1 million, and another $40,000 were spent on the construction of the road to the filming location. In the same year, the actor was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and in September 2004, he married model and handbag designer Christine Baumgartner. He met the girl on the golf course back in the late 90s, and in 2002, the couple separated for a short time. Kevin wasn't sure he wanted more children for fear of dying before they grew up, so Christine left. Soon, the man realized that the desire to be together with his beloved outweighs all his fears and revised his opinion about kids. Now the couple are raising three children. 
In the next few years, Kevin Costner's filmography was replenished with the films The Upside of Anger, Rumor Has It, and The Guardian. In the psychological thriller Mr. Brooks, the actor appeared in an unusual role of a cynical and calculating killer hiding beneath the personality of a respectable businessman. I have missed this. We are going to have so much fun. This is the last time, Marshall. Understand me. It's the very last time. <laughs> In addition, Kevin acted as a producer and planned to shoot a trilogy, but it didn't work out. This was followed by the films Swing Boat, The New Daughter, The Company Men, and a military historical miniseries, Hatfields and McCoys. For his role in the latter, Costner received a number of prestigious awards, an Emmy, a Screen Actors Guild Award, and a Golden Globe. In 2013, the actor appeared in the action movie Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit and played the adoptive father of Superman in Man of Steel. Costner had to perform difficult stunts in the action movie Three Days to Kill, followed by two sports movies, Draft Day and McFarland USA. All right, joke last, run more. Everybody tuck your arms in. You're all starting to look like the mangy chicken I got hanging around my house. You're not smiling, are you, Valles? No. The next film of 2014, the drama Black or White, Kevin Costner financed himself. He was so moved by the script. Soon, the movies Criminal, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, and the biographical drama Hidden Figures were released, for the role in which the actor, along with his colleagues, earned the Actors Guild Award for Best Cast. In 2017, the actor joined Jessica Chastain in the drama Molly's Game, which tells the story of the owner of an underground poker empire. A year later, he starred in a neo-western drama TV series, Yellowstone, where he plays the owner of the largest ranch in America, trying in every way to save his land from the claims of land developers, city authorities, and Indian tribes. For each episode, the actor received half a million dollars. In 2019, Costner took part in the film The Art of Racing in the Rain, about a dog and his relationships with people, voicing the main character. At the same time, the actor starred in the gangster film The Highwaymen. Ten years earlier, he had already been offered to play Frank Hamer, one of the Texas Rangers who caught Bonnie and Clyde, but he refused, considering himself too young. This time, he decided that he was better suited for the role, but still gained almost 16 pounds of weight for the role. You okay? I thought you had my back. You've been dead by now. You ran on one block. We'd both be dead. In 2020, Kevin Costner appeared in his usual role in the film Let Him Go, playing a former sheriff whose quiet life on the ranch was destroyed after the tragic death of his son. Now Kevin is working as a director and performer of one of the roles in the new western Horizon. Over the years of his successful career in Hollywood, Costner has earned a decent fortune, which is estimated at $250 million. But he is not limited to acting, directing, and producing activities. For a while, he co-owned a baseball team in Illinois, and in 2004, he opened a theme park south of Deadwood, South Dakota, telling the story of American expansion to the West, as well as a casino. The construction of the project, however, caused him to quarrel with the Indians, who were asserting their rights to the land. In addition, Kevin has a serious business of cleaning water from oil waste. His company participated in the containment of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. This, by the way, is related to the lawsuit when actor Stephen Baldwin sued Costner. Unfortunately for Baldwin, one of the first investors in Kevin's company, he sold his shares shortly before the deal with the oil company was made and lost quite a lot of money. Stephen accused his colleague of deliberately hiding the details of the deal from him and requested $17 million in compensation, but lost the trial. Kevin Costner is also involved in charity projects. The Hollywood star gets quite a lot of advertising contracts as well. Over the years, he was the face of the clothing brand Arquio Notus, canned fish brand Rio Mare, car manufacturer Volkswagen, watch company Jacques Lemons, and at the dawn of his career, Kevin, still unknown to anyone, appeared in an Apple advertisement. Costner also participated in the election campaign of Iowa congressional candidate J.D. Shulton, voicing his commercial and starred in an ad of the train route running between Paris and Bordeaux. The female protagonist of the video goes to Hollywood and persuades Costner to make shorter films so that passengers on the new high-speed trains have time to see a movie on the way. 
Previously, the actor owned a Mediterranean-style house with an area of 1,100 square yards with five bedrooms, a media room, a pool hall, a wine cellar, a gym, a swimming pool, and a tennis court. He sold it in April 2006 for $11.5 million. In Aspen, Colorado, the actor has a ranch with an area of about 160 acres. On the property, there are three houses by the lake and river which can comfortably accommodate 30 people. Activities in winter include ice skating, sleighing, and dog sledding, and in summer people can enjoy horseback riding, hiking, fishing, archery, kayaking, and surfing, as well as baseball. Kevin collected such vast lands as a result of three transactions, the last of which amounted to $7.3 million. The actor named the ranch after his character from Dances with Wolves, Lieutenant Dunbar, and most of the time rents it out for $30,000 to $36,000 per night. Costner has another ranch in the coastal town of Carpinteria, California, with an area of more than 17 acres. The actor bought this property in 2006 for $28.5 million, soon bought the property of the same area nearby, and then sold more than seven acres to his neighbor for $25 million. He tried to sell another part of his California lands in 2017 for $60 million, reduced the cost of $49 million, but eventually withdrew the property from sale. Back in 2007, the actor bought an Audi S8, and for moving around his property, Costner has a custom-made Toyota Tundra. It is equipped with everything necessary for outdoor recreation, a two-piece roof rack with a sleeping area, storage drawers, and a refrigerator. What's your favorite movie starring Kevin Costner? Thank you all very much. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.